video, I'd like to talk about trigonometric definitions on a right triangle. We use angles and the right triangles formed by those angles to model many scenarios in the world. Right triangles have a mathematics all of their own defined by one, the Pythagorean theorem, and two, the three trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Just as a reminder, the Pythagorean theorem says that for a right triangle with hypotenuse C and legs A and B, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And one really important thing I want to point out is that this only works on a right triangle, no other type of triangle. So uh, do keep that in mind if you get if you have scenarios with non-right triangles. Now we're going to work out what the definitions of the trig functions are, and we're going to do that using a, a random point located in quadrant one on the coordinate plane. So this is where the x-axis and the y-axis is positive. We're going to call that point left paren a comma b right paren. Now using this point, we can form a right triangle with that point, the origin, and a perpendicular from that point to the horizontal axis. So I'm going to grab a ruler and draw that triangle here. I'm going to put the little box in the right angle corner just so you can see which is the right angle. Now we can label the lengths of the horizontal and vertical legs of this triangle because we know that to get to that point in the top vertex of the triangle, we went A units horizontally and B units vertically. So that's A units horizontally and B units vertically. I'll label those two on the triangle. Now, because it's a right triangle, we could find the third side, C, the hypotenuse, using A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for now, let's just label that side C and know that we can find it using the Pythagorean theorem. So now we have a right triangle with sides A, B, and C. A is the horizontal side, B is the vertical side, and C is the hypotenuse. Now let's mark the angle between the horizontal axis and the hypotenuse as angle theta. And then we could sketch in an imagined circle that goes through this point AB. This is where my sketching skills are not going to be so great, but it would look something like this. So there's my imagined circle. And if this is a circle, then it has a radius of length C, the hypotenuse, since that's what goes from the origin out to the edge of the circle. If the hypotenuse of this imagined circle is C, then that means that this point AB is also equal to C cosine theta comma C sine theta, as we learned from previous sections. This means that we can directly relate A to C cosine theta and B to C sine theta. Solving for the cosine theta and the sine theta, in A equals C cosine theta, we're going to divide both sides by C. So A over C equals cosine theta. And then in B equals C sine theta, we'll divide both sides by C and get B over C equals sine theta. So now we have definitions for sine theta and cosine theta on this right triangle. Now we also know that tangent can be defined by the slope of the hypotenuse on this type of a circle defined on the coordinate plane. So we know that tangent is the rise over run of the hypotenuse, which in this case, the rise over run of this hypotenuse, the rise is B and the run is A, which means that tangent theta is B over A. So now we've defined sine, cosine, and tangent in terms of this right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C. In particular, it's important to note that the leg A is the one adjacent to that angle and the leg B is the one opposite of that angle. So we might just add that here in the definition. B is the opposite side to theta and A is the adjacent side to theta. Therefore, our definitions are sine theta equals B over C, cosine theta equals A over C, and tangent theta equals B over A. If we actually relabel the triangle with hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent, let me go back up and do that in a different color. So the hypotenuse is side C. I'm going to use HYP for that. The opposite side is side B. We're going to use OPP to label that. And 
the leftover side, the adjacent side to theta is going to be A. So that's A, D, J for adjacent. Now we can replace A, B, and C in these definitions and just use a more general sense of opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Thus, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, that's B over C. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that was A over C. And tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, that was B over A. There are a lot of mnemonic devices that people use to remember the definitions for these three trig functions. We typically always say them as sine, cosine, and tangent in that order, the same order you would see it on calculation devices. Some people like to spell out the S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A -H -H -O -A as SOHCAHTOA. Uh, personally, I like just remembering the ratios as, oh heck, another hour of algebra. Now, I'd like you to give this a try yourself. So I have a set of axes defining the first quadrant of the coordinate plane, and there's a point labeled on the screen, 3 comma 6. There's a line segment between 3, 6 and the origin, 0, 0, and the angle theta is marked by the angle between that line to 3 comma 6 and the x-axis. I'd like you to write the sine, cosine, and tangent definitions for this diagram. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, we're back. The first thing that I did was to actually draw out that right triangle. So I made a perpendicular from the point 3, 6 going down to the x-axis and sketched in the three sides of the right triangle. I know that the base of the right triangle on the horizontal axis has a length of 3, and the height of the triangle, the vertical height, is a length of 6. And I can find the hypotenuse of this right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So I would do 3 squared plus 6 squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. That's 9 plus 36 equals c squared. And 9 plus 36 is 45. So 45 equals c squared. Taking a square root on both sides, I would have c equals the square root of 45. So I'm just going to use that as the hypotenuse without making a decimal or simplifying. For this angle theta, which is again the angle between the hypotenuse and the horizontal axis, I need to label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So 6 is the opposite side, square root of 45 is the hypotenuse, and 3 is the adjacent side to that angle. And so now I can write out the three trig functions. So sine of theta. Make sure that you're putting an angle in there. It's not just sine, it's sine of something. So sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, and so in this case that would be 6 over the square root of 45. Cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and in this case that would be 3 over the square root of 45. And finally, tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent, which would be 6 over Three. So we've defined all three trig functions for this triangle. Now we've been working with one angle of the triangle, but triangles actually have two other angles other than the right angle. And we can write the trigonometric relationships for either angle by relabeling which sides are opposite and adjacent. The hypotenuse is always going to be the same side. I have another problem for you to try. We have a right triangle where the hypotenuse is 13 and the sides are lengths 5 and 12. 5 is the vertical side, and 12 is the base, the horizontal side. The angle alpha is between the sides 13 and 12. It's on the left corner of the triangle, and the angle beta is in the top corner of the triangle between the sides 5 and 13. I'd like you to write sine, cosine, and tangent for both alpha and beta on this triangle. Pause the video and give it a try. And we're back. Let's see how you did. I'm going to start with the angle alpha. So to the angle alpha, 5 is the opposite side, 
12 is the adjacent side, and 13 is the hypotenuse. So let's write sine alpha, cosine alpha, and tangent alpha. Sine alpha would be opposite over hypotenuse, and in this case that would be 5 over 13. Cosine alpha would be adjacent over hypotenuse, and in this case that would be 12 over 13. Tangent theta would be opposite over adjacent, and in this case that's 5 over 12. To the angle beta, the opposite side is now 12. The adjacent side is 5, and 13 is still the hypotenuse. So we're going to write sine beta, cosine beta, and tangent beta. Sine beta would be opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, that would be 12 over 13. Cosine beta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, 5 over 13. And tangent beta would be opposite over adjacent. In this case, 12 over 5. Hopefully you can now define the trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent for any given right triangle.